Alright guys, Tetsuko Beer back again today, hopefully enjoying your Friday so far and today we're going to talk about power rankings for the CDL right now in an unprecedented turn of events, there hasn't really been any pros going at each other's necks on Twitter over the last 24 hours, so it's time to take a little bit of a step back and a week out from the Minnesota home series in starting in a week's time when Chicago, Atlanta and the Dallas Empire are all present at the end of the weekend, given one of those three teams wins, I imagine we will be crowning a potentially new, well not a new champion, but also a new number one team in the game I would imagine because right now it's kind of difficult to say exactly where the power rankings sit but we're going to give it our best go in this video right here and I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below so like if you guys enjoyed the video subscribe if you're new as always I would greatly appreciate it firstly just a couple of little bits of drama Tyler Abizi losing a gulag to Clayster setting us up nicely of course for this next weekend when Dallas versus Atlanta is very very likely to be a match up in their group um places as my sources say you are correct a little bit of fun back and forth between Octane and Crim6 so you guys can read through if you're um well, if you are so inclined to pause the video. But let's go on to this next weekend's event in Minnesota. This is what it looks like. We've got Seattle, Atlanta, Minnesota, Dallas, LAG, Toronto, Chicago, Florida Mutineers. I'll talk, of course, my predictions when it comes to next week because it looks like there may be some changes to these teams. Saints coming in for Spart for the LAG as one of the examples. And, of course, Awakening coming in to the Florida Mutineers. Let's look through power rankings. This comes from, well, this graphic was put together by CDL Fantasy on Twitter, so I'll leave the relevant link down below. And I thought this was a pretty good list, so I'm going to use it to go through. Definitely some other ways that you could approach this and other ways that you could look at this power rankings, but I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts down below because I'm pretty sure the top three and the bottom three and whatever you order you're going to put them in is pretty much set in stone. It's the middle where things really get interesting and different opinions can certainly be valid. So let's look here at 11-12. I think it's pretty clear cut right now. LAG were, for a lot of people, the worst team in the league until Seattle Surge managed to lose to them at the most recent event. Absolute shambles. Um, it's been looking so bad for them in scrims. Like, what do they play with? They're using Panda. They're using Enable. Are they going to have Octane on this SMG role, which they've been talking about, which he has been using in practice? So it just doesn't seem like a recipe for success to me. So Seattle 12, LAG 11, I think is pretty damn clear cut when we look at their results the last few tournaments here. So this this is the Chicago event. Seattle did actually make the semi-finals in this one, but only because they beat LAG twice in the group play. And then since then, it's gone pretty much downhill. LAG did all right at the most recent event. They lost to London, then beating, um, well, they beat Seattle. Then they lost to New York. So pretty clear cut for me. These two teams are probably going to be at the bottom of the pile. Then Paris Legion, a team that was competitive earlier on this season, but they've slipped down the rankings a little bit. And look, it's a 12-team league. There's a lot of teams that are very good. I think Paris Intense makes, a, a, you know, a reasonable bit of sense we look at the most recent events they played they lost to Atlanta then they lost to OGLA and then they lost to you know Chicago and then they lost to OGLA so not exactly easy matchups by any means but it's not like they've taken these teams to a game five or were really particularly competitive with either felt like they were always on the um, on the back foot the entire series so Paris intent for me makes um, some degree of sense I think they're going to have to improve somewhat to step higher up the rankings especially when you consider the teams that are just above them and right above them being the Toronto Ultra I think this is fair they have had some good tournaments earlier this season um, there's no doubt they made the semi-finals at a recent one as we'll look at here in just a second, this Florida event beating New York, beating Minnesota and then taking on OGLA and losing in a game 5 round 11 fashion. That was a really impressive tournament for Toronto but then again you look at the squads that are above them can I realistically put them above the teams that are ahead of them? They had a really good result in Florida but sometimes, you know, um, Seattle made semi-finals as well and they're the worst team in the league. So I definitely think Toronto have some great potential. I think they can upset a lot of great teams on their day. I'm pretty sure they are capable of taking any team in the game really to a game 5 and mixing it up. They definitely have the um the caliber and the potential but right now in ninth place I think is just about fair enough but definitely keep your eyes on this team to rocket up the rankings potentially very soon as we will look at with the London Royal Ravens in just a second here because they have a pretty decent start here against the LAG very possible Toronto could make it out of this group B to another semi-finals so then let's look at the um the team just higher than that and that being the Florida Mutineers on this ranking and I think that, look, Florida Mutant is one at the opening online event of the Dallas Home Series. But then again, you look at this team, how it's gone downhill the last couple of events. Well, they went to their own home series and they didn't win a map. Since then, they've made this change for Awakening. 
So it's kind of tough to put them in different places in the league to where they are in eighth right here. Then again, you look at the overall CDL points ranking that we'll look at and come back to in a second. Mutant is a fifth right now with a very solid amount of points, a very good map win um, and a series win percentage. But at the end of the day, can I really put them higher than eighth given how the last couple of tournaments have gone, especially their own home series when they lose 3-0 to Florida, they lose 3-0 to New York to bow out of the tournament. Like That really shows a steep drop off in their performance from that weekend that they did win at the the, um, it was the Dallas home series. They beat Minnesota in the grand finals when the online things first kicked off, right? But Florida clearly on a much downhill trajectory since then. Definitely have the talent to just still do something. Maybe the awakening change could be the move for them. But at the end of the day, it's tough to put them too much higher than eighth, in my opinion, despite all the great results they have had earlier this season, beating Chicago a couple of times. You can definitely make a case for it, but then again, you look slightly above them and you're looking at the Minnesota Rocker, right, who have fallen off in the last few weeks as well. I think um, Nameless made a good point last night when I was watching Contesting the Point, talking about how, look, teams like Minnesota that have this great team chemistry and understanding of the game early on will often fall off in the latter half of the game because they just don't have the talent to compete with the best teams in the game and make in the case that maybe someone like Gunless could be a good option for this team, or even though it might go kind of against their identity, I suppose, as a squad. If we look at the most recent events like Minnesota, despite having been such a good team and very competitive earlier on this season, you know, they beat this Florida team 3-0, then they lose to Toronto, and they go out losing to New York in a 3-0 fashion. This is a very, very competitive series, but losing so many clutch maps, as they did this last weekend as well. Yes, they beat OGLA to start, but then they lose to Chicago, another couple of close maps, and then get 3 would by... Um, OGLA as well. So 0-6 to go out of this tournament. It's tough to say that Minnesota were a fourth best team, I think, earlier on in the season, but right now they've definitely fallen off. Still putting them above Florida on my rankings because they beat them 3-0 at, the, um, at the Florida home series. Above that, we get to the New York Subliners. And I think that really the Subliners, I don't really think you can put them any lower than sixth. I think sixth is definitely fair how this team has performed in most recent events. But putting them above sixth isn't necessarily fairer also, given that they haven't really made a grand final or looked like they're going to win a tournament, right? Because as we can see right here, the last three events they played in, they did beat Chicago 3-2, the gunless Chicago, then they lost, um, well, they lost to Atlanta phase in the game five, lost a close series in the rematch to Chicago, then the next tournament, so this is all where they've got Mack in the team, they lose to Toronto, but then they come through with a 6-0 fashion here before losing another game five to Atlanta phase, so, you know, impressive respawn stuff from the New York subliners, and then the most recent event, they do make the semi-finals again but lose to this new Chicago squad so they keep making semis but they can't quite make a final they're always mixing it up they're good in the respawns but they're not really a true championship contender yet in my opinion for that reason I think sixth is certainly fair for New York subliners I don't think you can put them any lower than this but any higher I think is stretching it a little bit then we've got LA Optic in fifth now, you could argue here it gets a little bit sketchy, right? and maybe the other team should go slightly higher. Then again, with the Chino change they have brought in, the last couple of events have looked very good for Optic. And I'll just bring up London as well, because of course that's going to be the fourth place team, given the top three teams are pretty much set in stone. Now, these two, I definitely think you can go either way. It's, it does definitely seem to me premature to put London in fourth, but then again, who else do you put in fourth place right now, given you have to put some team in fourth place? Let's look at the most recent events. Before London made this zero change, of course, they really weren't very good. They go at this tournament losing to Atlanta and Chicago. And um, yeah, the OGLA team had a pretty shocking one here as well with LAG even beating them. But then the next event where they do finally make this roster change, OGLA bringing in Chino, they look a lot better. They beat Paris, they beat London in 3-0-3-0 fashion. Then they beat Toronto in a game five round 11 before making a grand final and losing it to Atlanta phase. But definitely making a grand final is something to be talked about. Then the most recent event, they both make the semi-finals here. London get the better of them. This time, London obviously looked much better with Zero in the squad. OGLA looked very solid with Chino in the team as well. So we get to a point where, okay, both these teams made the semi-finals. London won the most recent one. OGLA have made grand finals. London have made grand finals. Seems to make sense to me that London Royal Ravens and LA Optic are in this format, but you guys could certainly disagree. So let's go on to the top three then and discuss exactly how I think this could shape up because Huntsman won the most recent event. Atlanta Phase won the most recent event before that. So Chicago won this beating London in the grand final. 
Atlanta won this one, beating OGLA in the grand final. And the events before that, which I think is really deciding a lot of these rankings, was the Chicago home series, when, of course, Chicago were playing with the gunless squad, but Dallas ended up winning it, beating Chicago in the semis, and then taking down Atlanta in the grand final to take home the trophy. At that time, a lot of people would have said Atlanta was the best team in the game, and I think Dallas really overtook a lot of people's estimations at this event. Of course, the whole discussion is around online. Would they have done it online? Possibly not, but at the end of the day, these tournaments are online, so what would have happened on LAN, the fact that Huntsman have a 3-1 record against Dallas on this entire season, three of those times on LAN, one of those times online, but the last time that Huntsman beat the Empire on LAN was back in February, right? So it's a long time ago, doesn't really have as much, um, you know, much weight today, given that Dallas Empire have clearly improved a lot as a team, and Huntsman have now made a roster change, right? So I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts on exactly how these teams should be ranked. For me, Empire should be above phase, given that last time they played Dallas Empire won, so I think it's tough to argue the other way. Then again, you could look at the overall standings and say that look well FaZe given that FaZe and Empire both have a game in hand or an event in hand over the Huntsman because after this um the, after this event here Huntsman won't be playing the next one you could say that FaZe are, you know, number one team because they have the most CDL points relative to the amount of events they've played, which is, you know, a reasonable argument, I suppose. Then again, when you look at the rankings, I'm thinking, look, Dallas beat FaZe last time. The real question is, where should Chicago go right now on this list? Because I think Empire, you know, above FaZe is fair enough right now, but should Huntsman be third, right? Because some people would make the argument that, look, Huntsman looked really, really good at this most recent tournament. They run through it. Then again, they run through the tournament in a kind of similar fashion to what Atlanta FaZe did. If you look at their run 3-1 3-1 it was a 3-2 against New York but then the 3-1 in the grand finals similar story to um to Chicago really 3-1 3-0 3-1 3-1 so probably more impressive from Chicago at the end of the day and you could argue it's even more impressive given that they had Pristini in the squad just joined into the team and that's a lot of people's argument right Pristini was just in the squad just a few days they win the event now given a few more days to practice and a couple of extra weeks they should be even better and in theory above Atlanta phase or however you want to argue it because they haven't played so so far this year so it's pretty impossible to decide who's better between face and Huntsman because they haven't played at all in the CDL this entire season on LAN or online. However, having said that, the Huntsman obviously looked great that weekend with Pristini coming in quickly, but there's no guarantee that they do continue to improve. It can definitely be argued that they should be continuing to improve, but we've seen it in the past that teams have great opening starts, like they'll have a good honeymoon period, and then it will go downhill after that, and maybe they'll have an uptick later on, but it's not always the case that a team clicks and just continues to get better indefinitely. They could click initially and not necessarily improve so much as a squad. So I think this weekend, a lot does come down to it. I think right now, this list is probably pretty fair with um, Dallas Empire being number one, FaZe being number two, and Huntsman until they prove they can beat the Empire and Atlanta FaZe in third position for me. But definitely things could change this weekend. I'm expecting a lot of fireworks to go off on the main stage right here because, or, well, you know, on the online main stage because Atlanta and Dallas looking like they should make it out of this group, you would think in theory, given how the other teams have looked. Chicago, you know, if they don't get out of Group B, I'd be pretty surprised. That means we're going to be setting up some very nice semi-finals and grand Grand finals action in the grand finals here to really determine who is indeed the number one team in the game right now.